team first, you know, a developer, you're not admin, you're not account, you're not management. This is medical. No, but the CEOs or something. Or medical, yes, medical. The medicine. Who are the oh, others? Others, others. Or farmers. For combination. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, the combination. They have ITAN, they are developers, the IT people, which are just the one. Yes, yes, yes. I understand that. Okay, so I'll, I'll just quickly introduce us. This is the uh, Power BI user group for Nigeria. So this is the, we call it the Nigeria Modern Excel and Power BI user group. How many of you are on the user group? If you have, you're on the user group? If you are not, technically you shouldn't be invited here. <laughs> but, but really, you should need to join the user group. It's a Microsoft uh, group for, for, it's called Pub Group. Worldwide they have it in every major city. They have a Pub Group, Power BI user group. So, but we, when, when we set it up, Excel and Power BI are, they are like brothers, right? And Power BI is the grandchild of Excel, right? So, because um, all the technology of Power BI is inside Excel right now, as you see. Excel is so crazily powerful. So, we're going to do quite a few demos on, on Excel. And also, we're going to show you the new Calc engine. Who has seen the new engine of Excel? Who knows what I'm talking about when I say the new engine? Tell me a little bit about it. Dynamic arrays. Dynamic arrays and stuff. And you can only get it if you have what? Office Insider. Insider. So how many people have Office Insider here? How many of you are Insiders? Only one Insider. So you'll be, all of you will be Insiders after today. Insider means that uh, Microsoft will be developing some interesting stuff and you want people around the world to test it. But it's at your own risk. If your system crashes and everything, you can't hold them to account because they're testing things, new things. So, and, and then again, it depends on what version you have. Because when they finish testing, then they will put it on mostly Office 365. How many have Office 365? Office 365, yeah. Who is 2010? Office 2010. Yeah, 2010, probably. Okay, your office is 2010, but you are 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about 2013? You use 2013, some people. 2016? Okay. 2019? 2019 is out. Oh, unfortunate. What's 2019? So, don't buy 2019. <laughs> Seriously, you should not buy 2019. 2019 sounds latest, it's not the latest. The latest office is Office 365. Always. So the Office 2019 is probably October version of Office 365. So October version of Office 365, they package it and say, oh, this is the version of, that we're going to sell to people and they have the license for life. Yeah? But they don't update it. So really, that's the old school way of doing things. New school way is power based. So you'll see all that soon. So I would love you to register to this group. Let's try and get this group as up as possible because the whole idea of these meetups. We do webinars every month. Every single month we do a webinar, free webinar on Excel and Power BI, another free webinar on financial modeling, and uh, also we're trying to arrange consistent meetups. Uh, we need only members of that group, and it's free. So that's what it's going to be. We're trying to raise this group up as quickly as possible. So it's pbiusergroup.com/slash labels. So most announcements, like this meetup announcement, the first people to hear about it will be user group. So let's assume we only have 50 slots. The user group they hear about it, they will look at it for like two days. If they feel the 50, that's fine. Then we now put it on in the public, right? After the user group. So, so that's that's the idea. You join the user group, you can first 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 cut all the information, right? We have some other meetup groups. So it's on our meetup group, the Excel, the, there's meetup.com, Nigeria, Modern Excel Park, uh, meetup group. Anybody on the meetup? Okay, only a few people. Wow. So everybody else, how do you get to Very good to know. No Facebook. Head of no Facebook. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, event bright. So you just went to event bright. What are the events happening? Nice. Right. Okay, so please join this group. Please join this group. Let's see if we can raise the numbers by hundreds at the end of these uh, sessions. So the sponsors of the events, the sponsors of today, 
Again, we need sponsors. Another reason why we can't really set so many new tokens because it's expensive to do a free event, right? And so we need sponsors as much as we can. So it's our firm sponsoring, and all the people you see at the back that are organizing it is all for free. So can we just give them a hand? <laughs> You guys are lucky, you have three MVPs. Three MVPs are going to talk to you today. Three MVPs. So, Microsoft was valuable professional, so the MVP is. And uh, they're going to talk to you today, so we're very, pretty, pretty lucky. And so, this is sponsors our firm, Deep Brown Consulting. This is what we do training, consulting, and payroll services. In training services, mostly anything to do with data. Then, consulting, we do a lot of Power BI and financial modeling. And then we do payroll. We have one special confidentiality service that uh, kind of uh, kind of guarantees confidentiality. So people can't see their case slips. What happens in companies is even if you don't see it, it's HR and maybe L and um, finance, they need to pay taxes and it slips. People see people's pay, which is not so good. So we have a system that kind of uh, eliminates that. So these are courses uh, we do. Anybody have done any course with Brown? Anybody? There's a few of you. Okay, and that's cool. So we do business intelligence, office, office 365, Excel, financial modeling, and the likes. Uh, for those financial people in accounting and management, I advise you to go and check out AFM, AFM, uh, FMI, Financial Modeling Institute. And one of the MVPs talking to you today is an advanced financial modeler. So it, it's a certification for financial modeling, and it's, it's super excellent. For our exam, all you do is go there and build a model from scratch. That's what it's Computer, you build a model from scratch. I've never seen an exam like that. No objectives, theory, build. You can build a model, you can build it for this company. And then once you finish, they mark your scripts and then you're a modeler. So it's pretty cool. Uh, your organizer, okay, what is it? Organizer, I'm the organizer for the event. Um, David and David Brown are a consultant to the World Bank. I'm also the managing partner for the Brown Consulting. I'm also a Microsoft MVP. And I like training a lot, so I'm an ATD master trainer and instructional designer and do a lot of other things. One of the core things I do now is build courses on Office Training Hub. So that's our uh, Office Training Hub is our online platform, Office Training Hub. Right. That, that's me. Jump quickly. Um, our speakers. So our speakers today is Michael Olakosi, I think the very first, if I'm not mistaken, the very first MVP in Nigeria. Uh, can we just give him a hand? He <laughs> is a group of gurus when it comes to Excel. So as in, you will hear a lot of things there and how he, uh, hopefully he will tell us a little bit about himself before he uh, jumps into the demo. So you guys have a predictive analytics demo you're going to see. And you're going to see, actually I think using some part of the new engine, because Excel now takes JavaScript and all sorts of Interesting things. So, yeah, Excel is not the Excel used to know. It has Excel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mike, Michael, Michael is here with us. Also, another MVP that's going to talk to you today is uh, oh, not me. Okay, sorry. Another MVP is um, Olu, Olu Shea, Uno Shea, Uno Shea. Uno Shea. Yes, Shea is going to talk to us today as well. He has a demo for us, special demo. You will see it when it comes. And uh, again, it's uh, related around Office 365, how to be more productive with that software. So something around productivity. Yeah, and he's an expert on SharePoint and many other things. So he'll be talking to us as well. I'll be talking to you as well a little bit. I have some, I want to kind of go into the engine, the new Calc engine, and show you how it's going to be, change everything about Excel. Everything you know about Excel, you can just throw it away. And you need to kind of relearn, but you relearn in a very different way. It's so much easier now. And write very complex stuff so easily. Right. Then <coughs> we also have Cynthia, I think. So uh, Shay is talking with Cynthia. We're going to be having the presentation with Cynthia. So it's excellent that we have female representation. Isn't it super? It's very good. So can we give Cynthia a hand? She's not here yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's us. What are we going to talk about? Well, welcome to the pub registration. I assume everybody has now registered. We are all pub members. Pub is Power BI user group, yes? No? Yes, good. Yes, okay, good. We're all Pub members. So uh, we'll talk, I'll talk briefly about the journey, but before that, I think I need to get, uh, I'll talk about the journey later because um, our first presenter needs to start presenting immediately. He has another event to attend. 
Then we'll do an intro to the new Power BI user interface. So they just changed the user interface. I'll just show you the new interface, which they've tried to modernize, and it's, it's quite amazing. How many of you use Power BI? How many use Power BI? Excellent. So kind of, kind of use Power BI. Power Query more, right? So yeah, it's all integrated. So Microsoft are trying to integrate everything, the entire ecosystem. They're integrating it. So when you learn something somewhere else, it's the same as what you're learning here. It's excellent, really good model, yeah? Common data model is what they're calling it, yeah? Everything is a common data model, so it's cool. Okay, we'll talk about, we'll just do some networking. Again, it's very important to network. When you go to events, it's good to learn from the speakers, but it's also important to network, right? So, extremely important. So, I'll just ask somebody a question. Um, sorry, what's your name, Joshua. Joshua, okay. What's your name? <laughs> so please introduce yourself to the guys sitting next to you and if you don't know them or know them, just introduce Can we do that? Okay. <laughs> Guess what? It's online. I will chat with him and he gives me everything. You go there for networking. It's networking. And if you, I don't like marketing, you, you, you are human being. You need to network. So always take that advantage of that. Right. So um, uh, you're already doing this. I think uh, we can basically start with our first presenter. You're ready? Okay. So can we give Michael a hand, please? <laughs> Answering this question it hasn't changed. So, we're ready. Okay. So, we're, we're trying to get an um, external keyboard. So, we'll be presenting, we'll be presenting to you, but it's at the back. So, until we get the external keyboard. Yeah. Right. Oh, you yeah. have. Wow, see? Can we do this excellent part? There is some Everybody, my name is Michael Olamzi, and I'm the 
what I'm missing from this was in balance. Uh, it makes sense to use your, your body to tend to talk about myself more than I need to on to late. So, um, let me just go straight into what I want to show you about. I'm hoping that for, hoping that for all of you, it's something new, something you've not uh, maybe seen before, or even the possible Microsoft Excel cognitive analysis. So we all know that there are how many one, two, how many types of analysis in the level of we have cognitive analysis from one of them. Right? You're going to do a bucket of different kinds of analysis. Can you tell me other types of analysis? Descriptive analysis. Then then you use predictive analysis. And any other one? Prescriptive analysis. I'm going to put that in italics. So let me just do that. Then, uh, any other one? Descriptive, descriptive. Descriptive, descriptive. Okay, I'm well for that. So it might be debatable, but when I explain why they call it separate, there's also exploration. So, let me just uh, explain what all those pockets are. Uh, well, you can, there are not too many, so I, I don't need to write them again. I'm too used to it. So, let's start with the number one one, the one that we are all very familiar with. They is descriptive. That's what we do a lot in business, right? So, management and uh, the business folks, they tell you, or if you're one of them, you will be the one telling you that this is what you want to see on a daily or a weekly or a weekly on monthly basis, right? And typically you want it to describe what is happening. So you want to see maybe how sales, how your sales are doing day by day, by some different other dimensions, maybe by folder, by region, by sales person, right? So we do a lot of descriptive analysis. In fact, some people begin to think descriptive is like the goal of what you can do in Excel. Uh, so that's descriptive analysis. You are basically looking through the data you have, going from that raw data to the insightful report, something that you can look at and you need to see the kind of pattern you want to see and begin to be more knowledgeable about what is happening as we get to all the data you have gathered, especially present data. Then there is the predictive analysis. So what most of us do in business is um, we do magic numbers. You know what we call magic numbers? Let me tell you what. So maybe I'm a salesperson, and then I get to work today, and my manager calls also all these salespeople and say, oh, we have an emergency meeting. So you know what? Uh, we had a meeting with management say, last week, and a whole lot of things have, 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 have come up. Your targets are going to be changed. And so maybe you used to do, say, 100 million per month, and they say now your target is 150 million per month. And when you try and ask, how did they come up with that figure? It becomes a case of typical. If you want your own you want to better start working towards achieving it, right? The magic number, the math falls from somewhere. You can't really say this was the calculation they need to come up with that. This is the number you should do, right? So it's very common. MD says we want to do 20% next year. Then everybody starts working. 20% came from, I don't know, maybe during shower. And then <laughs> everybody has to start. You know, getting some other magic number that uh, the few will help us arrive. This magic number, uh, my kid is an Indian, my kid. That's why he does, I understand, he wants to do his magic number. So he actually has his own secret thing that uh, he uses to, like, that's what he does that I do. Then there's a second one, we do moving average a lot. So we look at how you've been doing for like the last couple of uh, years, periods, and you've been doing 10% here on here or like, Present month on month. Okay, okay. If we ordinarily do this, I want you guys to work harder. So you are not going to get two percent, maybe you do three percent on what the basis becomes that moving average. Right? So those ones are very easy to do in Excel. The magic number you don't need to do any work, just ask the person giving the magic number, whatever it is you go to do, right? And then when it comes to moving average, you now do average of the last couple of periods. What about the much more intense ones? The ones that uh, people who are with and say, oh, data analysis, oh, this you can't do in Excel, oh, this you come and learn Python, you learn how. What about those ones? Are you now 
then help players when it comes to that, and you're like, okay, if it's that, I'm not, my answer hot. I'm going to do that to do those things, do those things, do Where? No. If you're an Excel person like me, you don't have to go learn. Where do you learn something new? But why are you learning those things? Also, you need to know that there's something already provided for you that you can take advantage of in the Excel, right? So that's repeat. And someone said prescriptive. So prescriptive, that's why I think you quote, because to me, it's when you combine predictive with action. So maybe now I put in a predictive analysis that can predict when, uh, say, a particular product is going to go out of stock. So maybe we have a warehouse, we have logistics. And so that thing does prediction, and then you want to start that. Anytime a product is going to go out of stock soon, it may generate a request for, for quotes and sends to all of your vendors, right? It's just the information part. There's nothing more to the descriptive than the information side. And then maybe the feedback loop if you want, but the feedback loop is still part of the descriptive. It's not like something that once you put it in, it makes it together and make it, right? And then there's exploratory. The exploratory is much more like what people do medical line, those who are into it. Uh, they told them, I have a friend that does what he's into. When he starts talking about what he does in medicine, I'm like, are you doing medicine or you're doing like, programming? So they call it uh, uh, sequencing or then sometimes we used to call that uh, just like uh -huh, those kind of things. And especially what they are doing, their mind is blank. When you're doing bits, when you're doing descriptive, you have an idea of what it is. Right? Exploratory do you think you don't have anything in mind. You just look at all the data you have to look for patterns. So you start doing maybe you start doing clustering. So the kind of things you do are different from the script. You start doing like clustering, you start doing K, uh the world. Some people do market basket, market basket analysis in business line. So they gain a segmentation and begin to look at that, that is a bit of kind of exploring your shoulder, trying to make sense out of it. Okay, so let's, that's the predictive I'm going to talk about. We're going to do things like, um, we're going to predict a load situation to give people load, and then you want to run things like logistics regression, all those things people mention when you talk about data science, and you're like, okay, well, I this thing, I can't find a formula that I've got in the stats in Excel. Then the second aspect is the Excel JavaScript has. How many of us are familiar with it? You've heard of it? Okay, you've heard of it? So we know that uh, BDA is more like when you decide that the Excel that you have, you know, what everyone uses, huh? you want to go and pull those ready-made things inside. You want to do things like automated completion from scratch, from A, start to end. And so you do BD, you program the whole thing, what you create is already transferred to the program on that. Why do you write the program on that? So instead of you having to create that way. So I do this a lot to automate reports for people where it takes hours. But then there's something in JavaScript. So this one is a whole completely different world. When we get there, I'll explain. So let's start with the first one, predictive analysis. So uh, if you can see what I have on the screen. Let me explain what you're looking at. Say you work for a microfinance or you don't give me money, right? You are interested in giving loans to regular guys like us. That's why I said my question, not to big banks. The big banks, they look for So, if you now want to put some level of automation, you know, do more with your data, right? So you have people who are taking loans from you before, and then there are basic information about them that you feel are useful. So their names, their gender, their age, their marital status, their employment uh, status, the location where they live, or then their monthly salary range, and then the loan amount they took, and then uh, whether they eventually be paid for the default or not. Now, this is information that is valuable that if you have someone who can do predictive analysis, you can look through it and find the pattern. And there are some people who, when you profile them, so almost like profiling. When you look at their own characteristics, they kind of fit into the kind of people that default 
body people that are doing the same thing. Right? So how can I do this later? In the way Where I'm going to do an algorithm that we're going to use a classification because the two out of the kind of situation is either you pay or you pop. So that's like binary. You pay or you pop. So we'll use something like a binary classification algorithm. And then you want to come up with ability for me to just approach you, ask for your details, and I'm putting into the Excel stuff we're going to view, and it will predict whether you are likely to fall. We can go grab an idea. But the idea would be to, first of all, um, identify what factors, you know, what factors will determine for you to go left or right. And, 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 and for one, the minute I saw the list, I wanted to say unemployed no. But then, if you look at the multi salary, some unemployed people can pay any above a million. So there are things like investments and TV and all that ways that they make money. So you, you can't just say no please on So you have to at some times maybe you have to pick some factors in between you know, And also besides going fully yes or no, they will complicate it a little bit more by saying percentages. Like if somebody is unemployed, you yeah, percentage reduces by 30. You know, and then the total. I don't know about Okay. And the total yeah, comes to the you know. Yeah, build the algorithm yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that will not be proper. Because uh, yeah, so, yeah, you're supposed to use something that you're not the one, there's no bias from you. Okay. You're the one who knows an unemployed person on that you should not be well off as an employed person. But then no, you don't want to bias. You want the algorithm to put that out yourself. Okay, I, I, I think well, Yes, sir. Maybe if you had units, if you had um, numbers somewhere behind the age attached to any of these columns, you can do maybe go seek and see where that number is above or beneath a similar range. So if I say anybody, if I do this profiling, anybody who has less than 50 bits will be false. So I probably just now set a go seek program at the end and say just look for the guys who have to do the picture. Look at your loss amount. What about looking at your loss amount? Considering the those who have the highest loss of what similarity do they have? Low is that no one works? No, no, Okay. The thing you say is really interesting. Uh, before I came up on this thing, if you give me this kind of problem in Excel, I'm going really to think in terms of what is my answer. I start thinking of okay, is there something I can do that can translate into a formula that can but the good thing is, if you know statistics, you can always do this from first principle. And you know first principle means it doesn't matter what you have, right? You can complete things out to so There was a feeling I had to do for some people in 2020 that we had to use Excel to do something like this. But what we did was we did a regression, Excel has regression. But then regression is not the best for a binary outcome. So we said, okay, let's try a map of the regression. It's more complex than what we're doing, but then there's people have to be. So we are trying to stretch Excel and be writing the formulas and be like using that here. And there was a whole lot of work that the thing we wanted to do when I did it, because at the point we switched to R. When we did it in R, people were like, why are you doing nothing for sure? Or the stressing in there? Because it's just the, the line code. You load the data, the data frame, and just like one. Some specifications and all what you spend like one day doing in Excel in like the five minutes, you leverage what someone has done, right? And that's what I want to show us how you two can leverage this new thing that I want to take us through. So I'm saying, is it possible to do this? Well, uh, uh, it's not <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping you would ask me, am I really sure about that? Are you really sure in Excel to do things like the uh, boosted? Boosted uh, logistic regression or random forest. Uh, okay, what are you saying? Uh, some of those programs are really nice and useful for doing some of these things. You can access five of them. They are too common ones. 
So we are going to find out. Are you ready? So we're going to do a table from scratch. Uh, again, I might have to be at the back in meeting of this one because I need to do something. Uh, but if you choose something, I want to exit out. Okay, so I can go back from now. I can decide to So, this is the raw data. It's uh, about 5,000. Records, sir. Huh? What we want to do is so. What I want to do is I want to do something that I need us to think in terms of data science. Huh? If you give someone who is a statistician or a data scientist, what you going to do? Is we will build up something that we learn from this. That we look at. Okay, the people that typically call. What are the characteristics they see as bits? Those that uh, we pay, what are those unique characteristics, right? And then it weighs them. So there might be some characteristics that are kind of like non significant. People default have it as well as people they default. Then you might be lucky that out of maybe six, seven characteristics, there might be three or two that kind of you see a bias. So you go exhibit it once, they will pay. And people maybe don't like to beat that, they, they default, right? So you want your algorithm to do that. And you will want to be, you want an algorithm that can keep relating. So the more you get more data, maybe every three months, you put in you because things change. No, that is no permanent, right? So that's what we want to achieve. But then, how do we achieve it? Are you ready? Yep. So there's going to be a small GT. Have you heard of the job? So that is the body of, it's an embodiment of all Microsoft Cloud solutions. So meaning that uh, anything we want to do that we want to be able to leverage, instead of building things our own self from scratch, we want to leverage existing products and so that way. And then we made it so that you can communicate with every single of the other which is what we're going to do, communicate also with Excel, right? That's what we will now used to achieve what I want to show you right now. So what I want to show you right now is a So this is what we want to do. Let me just be very obvious. So what I have is some random people. I can even ask one of them to volunteer. But so let me just do it first before I start getting volunteer. So I have some random people that I have here now. I've gotten their names. So maybe the marketers have gone out. Or if you even uh, integrate this with a uh, with a web platform or a Google form or a Microsoft form, you know, uh, Microsoft has also the experience. So if you integrate with that such so that you can give a form and, and that at the back end begins to populate an Excel sheet uh, with their name, gender, age, you know, all this information that you may ask them that for them, they just understand that you are trying to do your customer, but they don't know that if you are going to use it to take something more meaningful decision than just having it on the file. So I now have the amount they want to request for. I need something to predict. At least on the first level verification, someone can still take an intervention at all. But let's first run into the machine, right? So let it tell us if these guys are good fit or not. So I'm going to select the data that I have about them. I'm going to, uh, I will, uh, I will show you how where you ready for this thing in Excel. But let me just demo for you how it works. So I, I pick that and say yes. And then I need you to put the outcome here for me. And so I pick where I want the outcome to be. I don't think that's my, it's looking pretty selected, right? It's 
So the way to 
try it out. This studio.azureml.net. It's a free account, everything is free. Don't pay except you want to do I don't think there's anything you want to do. Please ask the studio as I can this one. So once um, you go there, you log in, if you don't have an account with Microsoft, it's fine to create. Creating doesn't mean you have to like create a new page. You can the same way when you buy a new phone, like Android, and use any of your emails to create accounts. So this one is fine to create an account with Microsoft account. And uh, for me, because I'm logged in, I'll just uh, go straight to my experiment. That's the best place to take you to. So once you log in, this is what you will also see in your own case. So once you sign up and log in, uh, because I'm already used to, uh, you know how close work, you want to explain to you, this is where you see the menus on the left, then you log out on the right. So it's not useful for us, but uh, I'm here to guide you. So when you log in, let me just see if I can make this video a bit clearer. So this is how it works. The data that I want to use to make the prediction, so the raw data that I want to use to do the algorithm, because you must build up the algorithm first, right? I already have the data. This is it. So you would have given me your, your data, and then I will have it already like this. This is even in the CSV file, whatever format you need, right? So this is what I will use to build, to train the model, to build the algorithm. And then this is how, once I have that, I go to this place. I say I want to create an experiment. So I want to create an experiment. I do new. Uh, that new, this, this is, can you see the new? This is that new. So once I click on that new, it will say you want to create, and they have a lot of samples that you can use to get familiar with how it works. So you begin to see some things that you know you will be like, oh, okay, this is possible. You can analyze it, you can do all kinds of predictions. So you can knock yourself out when you know, create <laughs> the or the experiment there. But we'll do a blank experiment. I'm going to pick a blank. So that way I create from scratch. So when I click on the black, it gives it a generic name, right? So I'm going to give it a name that I feel is relevant to what I want to do. I want to do a low prediction. Uh, so once you give it the name, you don't have to do anything of the same, right? And the first thing that we want to do is I want to bring in the data that uh, I have that I want to use to read. You can't do analysis without it. Uh, so all those guys will be saying, you can do this, you can do that. And then you forget about the DB guys, or the guys who gather the data, and you know, you know. So uh, I already got in the data. It's, it's very easy to bring it just to import it in. So I have it as my data set. Let me see if I can show you that set. So it doesn't look like that. There's on this left side of the experiment, there's projects, there's web deal, well, some things. The one that I want to talk about is the data set, because that's where you typically will start. So I want if I want to bring in a data set, the new is here. Uh, the reason on the lower left. You see me new again, right? Yeah. So that's where I click. And then I say I have it in my computer, and I go pick it up, and then, uh, yeah. then uh, this is it. 
So once you do that, you will see it show up here. So I'm just going to take what I have. This is drag and drop. So this is, you're not going to be typing, doing anything beyond. Everybody knows how to do drag and drop. You don't have to go learn that one in a special training. So I drag in the data set, right? So I think at this point I can go back to the one. But everything I need to do is drag and drop. It's similar to the drop. Uh, so you're beginning to find some things you use that are similar. What I bring in the data, when you want to do a trade an algorithm, you want to separate your data into training sets and testing sets. Right? It doesn't make sense to use all your data to build an algorithm. How do you not test the accuracy? So you split it maybe like maybe 60 40. Use 60 to do the algorithm, use 40 to test the accuracy. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say I want to split. I want to split the, the data. So I need to split this, I drag this there too. And then I connect the two. I connect this to this. And then I say you split it in a, I would rather, instead of putting it here, I maybe want to use 60 volts. So it's always the left that you're controlling. So that left, whatever you put here, is what to be the ratio of the data that will be on the left side. And then I am going to now say this data. Uh, by the way, I, I, there's something I would, I would like to do here. You know, we have their names. I don't know if you remember what they're doing. Their names are said, but we don't need their names to do prediction, right? So I'm going to tell the model that I don't need their names for the prediction because. How will your name determine whether you pay or not pay? So I want to even select some of the. I'm going to say I don't want to use all of the data. I want to select. It's a lot faster if I can just type what I want to do. It has of two. It has like a search. So once you say this is what you want to do, you type something like the longer line. Select columns. So I'm going to do that. In fact, I'll prefer to do that before to go uh, speed. So when I do select column, I get this launch column selector ticket. I am going to say the columns I want to include. So you see, I can start with all the columns. As I want to do it faster, and it's not letting me do it really faster. I'm running out of time. Okay, let me just quickly show you what it will look like when we are not so that. Because the doing it is just dragging, and I'll be faster if I show you what to be dragging. I will focus more on the aspect because I still I have like just two minutes. So I'll show you what it will look like. All the things that I was planning to drag there and then the end result. So this is
you notice that this was going we the data, right? The select, we are going to select the columns that I need to use. So this is what I was trying to show us here now. So I picked the columns I want, or it's wanting me to type one by one. So yes, I think I will need right? And then uh, I split the data now. So the only column you took out is the one containing the names. Yeah. Is that what I'm saying? No, no, no. I don't need the names. That's not the data. All the other columns in the data set are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Except the names. So I then pick in the split. So I do the split, which is, I even use the seven percent there, right? Then it splits into. I'm going to put seven to three. It's seven to the left. Yeah, seven to the left. So seven to the left would be my training set. Then thirty to the right would be my test set. And then uh, I bring the. Let me just increase the size. Yeah, so I Can you see? So I'm starting from, from scratch. Uh, I don't know why I want those. I drag in the data sets, which is only step one. I want to select the columns I need. So I pick, I look for the select columns. I connect the two. Right? I connect the two. Then I launch the columns together. Then, uh, so this was where that one was so displayed. So you see, it displays everything inside. Yeah. I want everything except the name. So you see, I pick everything except the name. I move them into this other side, right? Yeah. Then that's what I want to do, done. Then I'm going to bring in the split. If someone is timing us, you'll see that in five minutes I come. That's why I take this one with drag and drop. I connect the split. Right? And then I say I want it to be less use of the button. Right? Then I bring in the train model. So is there anything I type in, it comes up with the model. So I'm going to train the model. I drag that right in. Uh, so as you are dragging these in, the things will start you know, giving you a scope to make things So So the train model, I'm going to bring the little bit to the left connect the data here to this, then I need to use an algorithm for the thing. So I know that what I want to do is the binary prediction. So I need things that are like a classification, a two-class, something that I can classify into one of two options, right? So the, this one I want, I, want, uh, I want to type so that you can see all the options that they are around. And you know. So if you see that machine learning, and then uh, there is different types, anomaly detection, classification, classification is what I want. Uh, always, you, I, I always start with logistic regression, because part of that is, it, uh, it does the 
very well with this kind of data. So I'm going to drag in what is this regression. It's like regression, but more around those kind of outcomes. So I drag that in. Then I'm going to bring in evaluate model. So evaluate the model. I bring that in. I connect the output of the model to the evaluate model. I connect the other output of my split data to the other side that will have to be testing, right? And then uh, So once you do this, you just run it, and once you run it, uh, it will allow you to deploy. Let me show you what to deploy it. So is this possible to expand so that I will see the entire step? Okay, so like this. Have you seen the entire step? From the loan, it's led to long to the split to logistic regression, you train the score, and then you evaluate, and then this part connect to the other one. So once that is done, I run it, this is run. And after I run it, I will deploy. Then you run the model, you run the model, then you deploy it. Let me show you the deploy. So if you run the model, so if I run it, after it's connected, all of them. So once I run it, it will, once it runs successfully, it will now give you the option of set up. Can you see set up web service? Uh, new time. Uh, any, new. service and I launch it to launch then the other parts which you will now bring into Excel is you will see a deployment uh, let me just show you that so once you've done that you will get the can you see deploy I don't know if you can see it on my screen so after you already see deploy that is what completes the market once you click deploy once you click deploy, you saw it then you can see why. Once you click deploy, deploy. Once you click deploy, So it's trying to deploy, huh? 
I can quickly switch where that one is doing. So it's running, you'll see something running, right? I can switch to the completing part of my. Once that's the last stage, you will see an Excel file you can download that you can now type in. I can type in anybody in my automatically. It just works on the computer. So that's the predictive side. Huh? And everything as per all the different types of predictive algorithms are there. So that's the predictive side. I think you know it's possible and I'm showing you how to do it to some extent. Not as smooth as I was looking. Okay, I'm coming to our few questions. I just want to also make sure that I show you the next part too. The next part of the presentation, which is the Excel JavaScript and right? I asked us that we are familiar with DBA, right? And then so this is the one I'm just doing. The other one is the new hiding experience. So this one, those of us that are IT clients, you might really, really enjoy this one. Because one of the problems you have with the we have with the existing PDA kind of adding is the fact that uh, you it can be exploited. I know some companies that they disable it something like this. So if you try to put in any program that has a VBA, it's not going to go on, right? So what are the ways you can deploy things that your company can use without you having to go through the rounds of VBA? That is Excel exact analysis. If you're using Office 365, thank you. If you use Office 365, huh? if you go to Insert, you will see how this. Hmm? If you use Office, Office 2013 and 2016, uh, if you use Office 365, you get a lot more options of what you can uh, explore. So if I do this get added, you will see it just can be right in store, use to have versions. Or if you use the updated version, you see get added. The moment you click on this, right, it's going to show you a whole lot of uh, tools that you can use beyond what is needed in the Excel, right? And then uh, if you scroll down, you can Going through, you see some that are useful for you, some might not be. And then, uh, as I scroll down, scroll down, are you seeing something looking familiar? Can you something saying Nigerian market data? Yes. I did that and I just put it up. So you can do something too if, you, if it's not just your organization, if you want to do it, something anybody can install, right? And so, like in my case, what I built is something I can allow people to use. And so in other cases, so you solve the problem of distributing your. Aha, they can even pay you, you can pay price to it. So it solves the problem of distributing, you've done something, then you have to start doing paying for marketing. You can just see without me having to give them a link to it. And then if you do hard, instantly it will add it to your to your Excel, right? And then it opens up and so what I've done with it is. What I've done with it is, I made it possible for you to pull information that we all like to get from Nigeria. Like, you want to know what the FX rate is, who doesn't want to know what the parallel number of the FX rate is? Uh, one of the commonest things people keep telling me about it, and that's the aspect they want to know. So I go there, I say I want to see the exchange rate, and instantly it shows it and shows it to me, right? I want to see maybe the stock market. I mean, two stocks, right? I want to see what the closing market price is. It's only closing up and shows me. And so today is a 20, what? Uh, it's showing me for 29, because that's the last market, day, right? What if I want to know what it was, say, this same period last year, right? If I type in, so if I type in this same date for last year, 2018, I think 6, I think 29, and I click it and I say, you get me for that same date. So maybe they are on the wrong, I can see that. Let me give you that last name. Let me give you that last name. Let's even go two years back. 
Lesson 27. I like it. See? And you look at the data, right? So this can be good for those who have investment portfolios. You can be able to go back in time. And the same thing even for the exchange rates. You're an accountant, you know, you guys forgot to put the closing month uh, exchange rate. You can find the data. Okay, what about 2019, uh, 03, end of the month, or uh, whatever it is? I don't get what the exchange rate was that period. And I think you know that particular date for the elected date. And you get it out for you. And if you are the if you like CPN, this was the one I put there before. People said nobody, even CPN doesn't want CPN rate. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a CPN rate and Naira is you know. Also, all those things are there, but the thing I want to bring to your attention is how do you build some because the key thing is, you want to make it, see, I didn't have to install anything. You can use it only on your phone, because the same functionality exists on the phone. And then, even when IT puts the password to your, to give you all these limited rights, and you can't install stuff, this does not work with them, because you're actually not installing anything. You're only enabling something that is there already in Excel, right? So, how you do this is, uh, uh, this is the part where some people might be like, okay, and now I know it, but I'll give it to some other guys. <laughs> you really need to have, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you need to have visual studio, and then you build it inside here. But at least you know it's possible. So if you have a very large organization that you work in your exercise, this is something you can leverage. There are some companies, what they do is, if you go here, so now we're getting to the question time. If you go here, the same place I went to do the get this right? You will see my organization. I don't know if you. So there is a place where, if I go there, there is a place called my Hadi, and there is Admin Manage. Admin Manage is an organization you can publish admins that are just for your people in your company. So that way is another way to deploy things. Maybe like that exchange rate. Or so I've come to the end of my presentation. Unfortunately, the one that I was really wanting to do while you're taking, okay, it's finally done. Okay, deploy. So you say if I deploy, I can't go back. And then once you deploy, any question? So I can take question as you are down. So once the deployment is done, aha, can you see something like, let me just close all these things that are going. Can you see that I can download the Excel file? Ah, this is the magic of it. Is this is what I now download. That now makes it easy. Like, you open it, you now see the same experience you saw me use to answer, and then I can type in any question which is looking right now. Oh, I need to close it. Yeah. Uh, so, this was the thing. so, you now see the thing that you saw me using in demonstration, right? You see the, that's the only bit that is outside of it. The moment you do that, everything you see right here, you saw that bubble that we saw the other time. So, that would be really cool. Any question? Yes, sir. So, okay. The, the, I saw you use call. Okay. Yes. Well, what did you do with that? Okay. Uh, the, in picking the correct model, or whenever you create a model, don't need to evaluate how it performs as regards to testing, you know, testing the database, right? So that's what that score model does. But because of time, I couldn't show you the results. This is the way you have the have so this one we now give you there is a technical way of it. They call it um, is this a true positive confusion matrix. I don't know if you've heard of it. So it's very to see true positive, false positive, then it's calls your accuracy and see maybe this thing was using like a way to do this the testing. So that's what I think that one will show you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Sorry.
is how did you what the consideration that you did for what logic you did have that helps you to determine what the Ah, very good question. Uh, remember I said that everything can be done from first place. This question is the, the regression model I did. What did I put as my parameter? Did I, did I set the features? Did I do something? Mm -hmm. The good thing with this um, off-the-shelf uh, product is they can iterate, they can find the best setting. I don't know if you have this forecast sheet in Excel. I do know. If you go to data main, you will see something called forecasting. How many of you have this? This for forecasting sales is that is a time series stuff. But if you if you don't know the statistics behind you, kind of take it as trivial. What it does is what we call uh, triple exponential smoothing. Like it finds seasonality, finds trend, finds the uh, error factor. That thing I've said, if you try to do it you know, outside of Excel or manually, you can use like the whole thing. But they put them there, right? And the thing is, because they don't expect you to be statistician, it automatically determines your analysis. It automatically do all those things. So that way they program some of those things, right? Now, even if you're a new, you, you, you don't know how to use these things, it will always find the best settings by Excel because it can also score itself and evaluate. So that's, I don't think it's for that, you know, specifically. I'm doing a competition and I want to get like accurate results and I want to have like higher score kind of stuff. Uh, yes, sir. So, share with me some of them. So, you inherit this data set that you used to train the model. Then, three months down the line, you're still sitting in the collecting more data. So, you say we have more data that you can use to complete the data. The data is bigger. Do you go through this entire process again? So, if you use these things we have done, huh? it's just the data set to the place and just bring up the so that thing I was trying to deploy. So you will not you don't even need to re-download this guy. You just go to now replace the data model there, tell it to update and then have some stuff. You can keep the data in the new environment. Yes, sir. So I just want to confirm that it's not had a fast school. Right? Around the sleep data set, like 60 40 or 70 shares. So does that have any implications for the outcome mm -hmm. of the model? Okay. So, I don't know if you are heard this thing very today. There's always a significant population, like some significant sample. If you, there's this formula, it's almost like a rule of thumb, there's a formula to do that. It's even easy to find out. You can go online and say, I have a population of 2 million. What sample size can I take as representation? So that's what people even call this election and government and all these uh, polls use. So they know that this is a target number they need before they can statistically say this is resource, this is value, right? So the first thing is, once I know that amount, I now look at my data set. If I have a data set of, say, 5,000 records, and when I do that thing, and based on maybe all our customer base, uh, 2 million customer base, if the, what you can Google is, I don't remember the formula, but you can call it something like the people have built tools around you say enter the population size, click OK, in take the sample size to get. So everything says I need a sample size of 2,000. If you give me, in fact, me as a consultant, I will ask you, give me, I will have done that and say, give me, I will do it, I will say times five of it, because people can cut down. <laughs> They're like, oh, you need all these also, you just give me my of what you ask me. So I will now use that. Back to how it ties to your question. So now, when I know I have 5,000, but it says I need 2,000, then in that case, I'm, I can go, I can, as long as what I put on the testing side is more than 2,000, so there's no more room. But if I now have 3,000, then there's a problem. I must apportion a lot to the testing side so that it meets that uh, sample size requirement. So, that, so yes, sir. Uh, just to recount the steps, so you select data sets. Select from the split data. I bring in the data set. Bring in the data set. I select it because sometimes it's very common that there will be some things in your data that are maybe confidential or, or things that are very useful for speeding things like me. That's what the select for. Split data. Yes, sir. Train model. Yes. Then uh, you said you start with the two parts of logistic regression. Yeah, on that one, you change on train. 
is that the only one you use for that particular yeah, yeah. 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 Train. It's called Scope for Train. So the way it works is that that one goes to the train. The train goes to the score. So that score, the train goes to the score, then the second side of the other spring plate goes to the other side of the score. Then now, the, the score has only one output. So that one output goes to the evaluation of So, so after evaluate, you run. You know, then so what? Uh, before you deploy, it, sure that evaluation, once you run, you can right click on evaluation and view result, view accuracy. So I will now click on that view accuracy, show me that confusion matrix. How many are uh, to even write in plain English terms? You can read confusion matrix, but if you cannot read to write it, 60% accurate, 40% accurate to write it. So sometimes if I feel the accuracy is not good, I can go and change the result according to my user and use another one. But after that, if I'm okay with it, I'll now So finally, how do you you're very right for the machine learning part, so it's all experiential, right? So, how do you refine the model so that it gets better? Either with each one or like you said, when you have new uh, data sets, how does that work? Is this something you have to do, or the, um, it's already set up for you to sort of take in that feedback? And I think I now find it better with the one You know, I brought in the data as a CSV file. I didn't show sure you can connect to it like this. So that would be better. So you can let it just connect to like the So you don't always have to like be importing the the steps file. So the data goes the results adjusted. The only thing is when you connect to like that, you might need to also specify that you should not have build all the data in your database. Maybe you should bring the last five thousand, maybe you know how you did just here. Select top one thousand like this. So that would be better. On this side, I don't like asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have a question. All right. So, from um, to the data science perspective, how much of the theory of statistics do you need to know for it to be the truth? Like, the most successful algorithm, say, like now you know you're doing the binary classification, either zero or one. So, when do you know, um, how do you know when to use, say, no, I'm just saying, like, how do you know? You're speaking in lingo that. Depending on your data set, how do you know? How much of the theory do you need to know before you go? Yeah, once uh, my time is up, so I'll just also take the steps and provide the answer. Okay, so, I, I, I don't know if the, the uh, geography has anything to do with any extent. So, you have a data set, and that data set probably explains the American system, for example. If you bring it to the migrant setting, would there is there anything you need to do to account for behavior so that what you get as prediction kind of like matches what happens to that? Like you don't just take a test and then just superimpose it on the migrant setting. So if, if a microfinance bank wants me to build a model, can I just go on and pick a model and say this is how it is? And then three, down, three months down the line, you answer how you told us it happens on the Let me answer the question. So the question number one is uh, how do you know which algorithm to use, how do you know how you feel about it? Do you know how to be good in statistics? Two things. If this is a path you want to follow, like you want to be a professional in that path, then you can buy a path to fundamental level. You have to be good in basic statistics. Yeah. But if this is going to be a one-off, maybe something you don't need to do with it, or it's not like maybe you want to switch career, then you can just read as it relates to what you want to do. I can Google that. I want to Market basket, market basket analysis, or I want to do association. Or I can just do that. I will just focusly read on the things I want to do. I use that link and I apply. So that's what sometimes I do when I have things that I know what I want to do. I just do that. But then uh, question number two is: uh, Can you take something that someone has used outside of maybe the US or some other continent? The good thing is data is not. We are the one that knows that this is Nigeria. Data doesn't know that. So the only thing is just that, again, data might be different. So it's more about the data itself. So it's always good that algorithm might be similar, but it's good you run yours from scratch. You might use that person as a guide. Use that to do your first run. Then start fine tuning. But 
always never correct your state of power by bad thing and by using to wait. You will always have to do some kind of process. Even in the same area, two different companies will fire that you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> So we need, we need predictions in just a few minutes, even with the technology issues that we have. And uh, it's just drag and drop. So that's the thing that uh, Microsoft is doing, right? Microsoft is making it as easy as possible, for just integrating stuff. Just think about a company or a company where one department is not talking to another department. It's not possible for you to move forward. And so when people are not talking to each other, Yes, you may still be growing, but it's growing at a really ridiculously slow pace. So think about Microsoft as a country. It's not really a company. It's too big. It's huge. As in, it's just too huge. So what happened before was people were not talking to each other. Excel team were not talking to PowerPoint team. They were not talking to Word team. They were not talking to single team. Nobody was really talking. And even inside the Excel team, there is the VLOOKUP or function team not talking to the I don't know, interface team, not talking to, to the different teams. And really, things were not really working as they should. And there was really no competition. Who is Lotus 1 to 3? Uh, these are ancestors. <laughs> 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 Who used VisiCalc? The guy should just go. VisiCalc is the very first spreadsheet ever. Very first spreadsheet. First spreadsheet. But a Lotus 1 to 3 has some stuff that even Excel still doesn't have up to today. It has some really cool stuff. And what I tell people is Lotus, I think it was just a problem of success, really. And also, and they, they kind of packaged the Create One X. You saw, you saw what Michael did there. He just went and got a free add in and put it in. So before any small adding like that, you pay. You will pay money. So Lotus invented the pivot tables. They are the ones that invented pivot tables. But I think you have to pay for it and attach it to Lotus. And then Microsoft decided, they did reverse engineering. The Chinese are doing it now, they were doing it then. So they reverse engineered the pivot table and put it in for free in Excel. So you buy Excel, you have your pivot table, you have your stuff. So gradually, and then the competition died, but then innovation stopped. Innovation stopped in Microsoft after killing the Competition. Who used Netscape? Who have ever used Netscape? Netscape, Netscape, browser, yes. So Netscape was far better than Internet Explorer, right? So how how you you can either improve, you can make your software good and it sells, or you can do a small trick. And the small trick is it's good enough. You can do the good enough trick to sell your product. Good enough is you buy Windows, you have Internet Explorer, which they decided to now give for. And then you have Netscape, which you needed to buy. Yes, you know Netscape is better, but you need to spend cash. So you end up using it as for ah, we'll manage. How many of you would like to say that in Nigeria? We'll manage. We're all managers, how can you know? We're all managers, we're managing. So that's what happened. But now Microsoft's competing. They have a new focus. I mean, the, the, the motto is wanting everybody in the world to uh, achieve more, right? So it's it's a completely different uh, ball game there. So they're integrating so many things. So you can imagine like Power BI and Excel too. Every single week, Power BI is updated. Every week, every week. I don't know who knows the Gartner report. Have you ever heard of that report? Yeah. Gartner report? Yeah. So I think, I think I have it on board. And, okay, no, I have a different question. So Gartner report just assesses business intelligence tools and many other IT tools. And Microsoft just keeps on going to the top, 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 because they're now talking to each other. And we don't need to go and learn Excel. And they were now Power BI come to start learning new things. It's the same thing in Excel, just a different uh, looking package. It's like Excel with PowerPoint. That's what I think. It looks like PowerPoint, you drag and drop, which is very nice. But the DAX you are learning is the same thing. DAX is data analysis expressions, it's a new language. So you think you know Excel. You know VBA, you look up and all this stuff. There's another language called DAX you have to know, unfortunately. DAX. And then there's another language you have to know, M. So Excel, I don't think it's important, possible to finish learning Excel. I might get correct me it's not possible. So the thing is, just, just focus on your path and learn that path very well. And then understand the story around how Excel works. 
So that, I'll give you that story, but people are hungry when it comes to small snacks. I'll give you the general story of how I break down Excel, and no matter what new thing comes in, you will, it's, it's nothing new. You will know it. Another secret of Power BI, if you want to know what's coming in Power BI, look at Excel. Because they're mimicking everything, everything in Excel. Oh, they made one else how many, like, a year ago, oh, we've now got conditional formatting in Power BI. Ah, Excel. It was very rudimentary. Yeah, we've improved it. Excel. So they're just kind of replicating Excel. I don't think it's a replacement. They're not replacements. They work together. You have to learn how to use them well together. So I'll give you a general story of the entire framework from physical to this. So you have a framework of how these people are thinking. That way they will not surprise you. So any new thing that comes, you know you can use it without anything. Okay. But uh, I don't know, should we have tea break now? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's have tea break. Uh, we just have tea break there. It's uh, like 10k. It's 10k. It? 10k per person. Yeah. 10k. So she will collect the money there. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, right. So let's have tea break. Let's say like 20 minutes and then we'll come back. We'll do two more sessions and then we're done. But let's mingle as we're having tea break. Please talk to your people. Yes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's a price. There's a price. There's a price. There's a price to be won for how many neighbors you know. Data. And the funny thing is, the data is you guys. They're giving us free data, which is nice. I'm not saying it's bad. They've just one billion people. Okay, say yes. One billion yeses, right? So that is data. And you guys are filling in data. And they're using that data to do all sorts of machine learning, AI. What is coming next is something else. You think you haven't seen anything. Okay. So at least what we have now, let's see how productively we can use it. So please give a hand to Thank you. Okay. If you want to highlight, press this. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is um, Sheyi Oluwa Wumiju. And most time I always win because uh, my name is always beating every other person. And mind you, my middle name is not there. If I had it, the only people that could beat me around the world is from Egypt or yeah. all those Indian combined brother, father's name together. Mine is Oluwa Shei, Ola Sukomi, Oluwa Wumiju. <laughs> so I'm an MVP, actually, um, as David said, office half and service. I'm also a trainer and also happen to be the regional lead for Nigeria and they're extending the responsibility to the West African coast one way or the other. So I've been around Microsoft for a while and that's my handle if you want to follow me. So today, what we're going to look at is why business insight in this digital transformed world. You guys are the next wave. You might not know, I think you should just gel up. Everything that is going to happen in this new age is going to happen from guys that have this, that can create insight for people. People that can use tools. I might not be the one that will do the demo for Excel like Michael, or the one that David is going to come, like the Power BI. But I just want to lay, I'm the soft guy in between two of them to make you to understand that you are in an era that they need you for everything to happen. Why business insight in this digital transform world? That is the question. Is data for, for description or for transformation into information? What do you think? Can I have somebody in the house? What do you think data is? In, you know, in those days, when data, people that get data, house data, they feel like champion. I have got all this data, I have it way out somewhere. And when they talk, it's as if they have this uh, data warehouse, they have to link this, transitional, and the rest. What do we use this data for? That is the question. And that's the age we have. And this data, it's, there's, a, there's a term now called big data. Everything is coming, converging in the points. But with all this, you find out that it's, it's not really worth it to have data without using it for information. Now, I, I did a typical example. 
How many of us go to a one bed party every Saturday? Do you know the, the huge data? It's every Saturday in Lagos. So. There is a movie that is coming up. They were talking of Lagos Life. I saw it in the preview when we took uh, Adna, one of the MVP that came from London, and, and they were showing how Lagosian colorful party and that. Now, let's take a typical example of their own one by party. And let's look at the data that is coming every Saturday. Photograph, Facebook, Instagram. What can I use this data to do? Do you know I can actually use data to know the trendy cloth they need to wear for the next parties? That is where you guys sit. And that is the power you have. Look, um, thank God for people like David and Michael and DJ and the rest that is bringing up this kind of thing to this area. Because there's a lot we can do. This is just my own myopic person thinking this way. All of you guys have this data to play with. I leave it there. What is business insight? Generally, business insights, they said, is combining data and analysis together. And when you combine these two, what will happen? I look at it this way. Business insights is the gap, is the gap builder. It's the one that can tell a CEO, a CEO or a CFO to understand the next trend of business it can go to. I was in a presentation, yes, but I always tell this story. I, I started up as a research assistant. I worked for a company then in stock exchange building at Ishekels. And then my MD and CEO, after we have gone to Maduguri, we did a project for MTEL and we gathered all this information, put it on SPSS. <laughs> sure. We put every, all those information there and the guy, after spending two days with Excel, you know, we have done the dirty work. Oh. The guy come on stage and be bouncing and was telling Mtel that when you, are, you can get a phone with double SIMs, there are so many people that want to use multiple lines. And that's what we're having today, almost 10, 15 years ago. But do you know the, the greatest, um, the acronym for our own work was not to us, we that went to gather the data, was to the guy on stage that was bringing this insight and bridging the gap and telling the CEO, telling the commissioner of information, telling the minister, this is the way we can make this brand to be better. And that is the era we are. I read a story from McKinsey and um, I want to do, I have a gift. This is more sticker, you know. In those days, um, in the recent time, I noticed that instead of getting tattoos, why don't you put tattoo on your system and make it colorful? So I have some. So I want us to discuss this. Can anybody analyze this two diagram? I would love the ladies to do that first. You know why? I always preach inclusion anywhere I go. We want more ladies, we want people, we want them to now take the central stage. Too much men. How many MVP in Nigeria? All males. One female. So that it will be soft landing. Any lady for us? Can, I, can you analyze this too? Forget this capture, just analyze it in your own way. Adia, the boy is coming to you. You say? Oh, who can see her? I know her, I don't want to call her. Um, Ma'am, can you help us with this? I want you to be interactive. Can you help us with these two diagrams? In your own understanding, what do you think these two is saying? You? Yes, ma'am. You say? You? Oh, why is the females? Can you help us to analyze this? I'm not putting you on spot. I just want your idea. It's not something that, yes, to separate in and just analyze it. OK, this one you can see. What do you think it's saying? Um, it's saying that some industries are more digital. That okay. probably use digital solutions more than, more than the others. So can you use this to 
to make a decision instantly? Well, um... or do you still need more analysis? Oh, make a decision instantly? Yes. Not necessarily, but if I was just look at it at the service level, I might say that there's opportunity for growth. One. In public sector, pharmacy, those ones are high. Okay. Just diagram with statistics properly arranged by bringing using the inside tools like Power BI, like Excel. You can sell this to managers, make them to see the importance of using data they have and making an informed decision. Sorry, not you now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'll you. give the lady that made the statement. I'm not putting you on spot. <laughs> Thank you. So, what's the difference between data, information, and insights? What is data? I told you my experience. That's where I travel around the north. I went to Zamfara. You know, those days there was no killing, no. We are safe. <laughs> So travel to Zafara, stay, so, stay in the villages, get data, get those data in Excel, take it to the head office, they mine it with the SPSS, we have the team that does that, and my MD go on stage and become champion while we do all those dirty work. Then what is information? Information is actually collecting those, those, info, those things from the data, like extracting it. And what is inside? Inside is now combining the two and bringing what intelligence out of it. Now, it has gone beyond just bringing intelligence. Michael just showed us what we can use machine learning to do, prediction. And that is the exciting about you teams, you guys, the team here. Because you are going to a point, I was in a section when David and Deji was there somewhere in Microsoft, and they showed something on Power BI, and they asked Power BI a question. What would be the, in, in my, they brought some data set, what would be the next opportunity for this business? And Power BI brought it out. Do this, do that, do that. And when you check it, it's real and it will work. It might not be 100%, at least 98%. In the past, how do we do business insight? Now, I just brought a diagram and it shows how industry. Now, business now, in, those, in, 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 the, in the past, you notice that most some business take 30 years times the lifespan, but it has reduced gradually. Now, it's a, a company that can survive without intelligence can only last more than five, 10 years. They are gone. How many of you know what we call butter? I'm an old block. No, well. You wore it. Second is second. Is, is it still around? They have a store. They are trying to bring it back. Oh, they are trying to bring it back. Oh. But do you know the flavor of butter those days? Separate. With your shoe. Oh, God. That as in. That's the, the way they do inside those days is that they use intuition. They use tools that cannot give you definite idea on where you should go and how to predict it. And it was very, it's like you are, you are forcing yourself. But in those era, like my MD those days, it looked like a champion. What of, if it is now, what would the man become? They'll be calling him and to come and present. Because it transformed those data. He brings information out of it. With the little technology he has, he was using it for insights. But we are equipped now. And this day, we are now, we have a very good journey. Now, for me, this is the way I look at business insight. First of all, you need to have what happened, the reporting aspect. That's why Dave, uh, Michael was saying when I entered there, he said, you cannot do anything except you have data. So you must always unshake those data guys. They are, they are key to your success. Because if they give you, although they don't know, you have to transform those data, collect those data, clean it before you can use it for insight. They don't know what you go through. But the, the fact here is that you need to unshake them to get a proper reporting. Then you need what we call interactive dashboard. 
and that's why the power of Power BI. Now, I'm going to show you a very simple tool. How many of you use Office 365? They introduced it in 2016. It's called Microsoft Planner. Very simple. But do you know you can do a lot with it? Because of the inside that is embedded in it. We are going to look at it shortly because I have a short time. Then the next thing is, what will happen in the future? And that's what we cannot get in the whole era. You can predict what will happen in the future by creating model. Like what he showed us in the morning. Model that you can use Excel to create and you can predict loan. Many people need that prediction till now in the banks. Do you know how did they do They go, insurance is what? So, sorry, is anybody in insurance? <laughs> <laughs> insurance, do you know what they do? They carry paper. They go and check the car. Okay. Do you know you can build a model that can predict if your car is from 2020, 2013, 2016, you can live this lifespan. And you can now do a premium on it. What they do to give, it to, give to us now is a straight jacket. 5,000. And they can make more. What if my car is just the only car made and I brought it to the country and my insurance should be this premium and I should get this premium? But they don't know because there is no prediction. Then, what should I do? Where you are the champion like my MD is when you talk in the office and you are telling the MD with the Power BI, this is what you can do, this is what you can do, take this, it's become an insight to him. Instantly, we say, yes, we are taking the next direction. Like when I showed that on one bear, it's a common thing we see, but there's something you can get out of it. People go to party with different colors. How can, can you talk to the my father and say, can you produce this kind of clothes in the rainy season in Lagos? The type of color they want is pink because of, you know, you know the way our road is. People don't want to use white. And that's a prediction. It can come like an insight, and you can sell it and make money. I'm gradually coming to an end. So the convergence is now accelerating. Power of the cloud. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I, I'm talking a little bit marketing now. David and Michael will do the tech. <laughs> now, the cloud now is giving us enough energy that you can spin up a VM at a short time. And you can do a lot of things with the cloud services. And that's what we don't have then. I remember when they are doing that SPSS, this guy, this assistant, can spend a week, two weeks. Well, you will run and run, collate, but with few minutes, you can upload your data just as David did and do a prediction, which you cannot have. Sorry, Michael. Sorry, Michael, I mixed them. David is. Um, after Nigeria, after so, so data, <laughs> data now. The power because we have data everywhere. We notice that you can even you can even predict through Twitter, Facebook, what is people, what do they want, and get those information and make intelligence out of it. Everything is converging, and the truth is that. The power is in your hand. You are. So I'm, here, I'm a soft guy that is in between Michael and David just to make you to know what you can do and to see how you can look at it. Now, I told you about what's happening 25 years, seven years. Now, every, the lifespan is shortened to 15 years. So that means your role is now showing anywhere, everywhere. Because a, a, a businessman does not want to spend time to begin to build and build. He wants information that can carry him to the next level. And that's what insight can do for you. So many solutions I said, thank God they showed one using Excel. There are others like Bot, Convergent, um, all, all those things Microsoft is bringing up. Microsoft is really investing. And what they are trying to do is that they are making, yeah, they are making money, to be, to be frank, but they are trying to make things easier for us, giving you tools that you can make. And that's why we are calling for you to start bringing um, bring your own application. Look at what Michael did on Excel. It's published. You can do the same. But how you look at it, the channels is there. And everything is there for you to take. 
how do you take it? A lot of it is all around the world. This is banking, professional services. This is what intelligent has been making people. And they have been using it. And they are, Now, when we started with um, watching cinemas for those with, you know, those times, you know, this Kokodan video, and to have it on the streets, is only one person, you just queue to the window to begin to watch films. <laughs> Cinema came, you know, this guy, Netflix, they just came up. What can we do? Let's make a change. Everybody sits in their home. We have this home theater, some of our home theater, when it's just like the cinema hall. Why do you have to pay for cinema? We can give you by service, pay for the video per month. And this guy is making it. You can do the same. Simple case study, Rolls Royce. They set out to do something, and this is what the um, senior vice president said some years back. Now, they have data. You know, intelligent cars are coming now. But do you know before they start building those intelligent, they went through research. They analyzed those data. They put out information from it, and they brought insight. And this is their story now. This is what they did. They have an objective. They have a tactics, and it brought out result for them. I know there are some, some business owner here. I've, I've met one. There's one here. I know him very well. And a lot of us are here. You can actually run on this and make a change. Don't look at this user group as just a time for you to just come and have knowledge, go to the office, think out of the box. What can you do? to make impact in this society. There's a lot of things we can change here in Nigeria. And we just need people that can just look at this objectively and walk towards it. Finally, I'll do my demo on Planner. I'll need volunteer, just three people. I'll send a team request to you, just accept as a guest. Then I build the Planner and we'll see the inside I'll come out of it. Any volunteer? Ah, thank God for the ladies. They are volunteering now. Thank you. Oh, well. Any other person? Okay. I still have a lot to give out. Just a Yama sticker. Ah, you got too good. Yeah. Any other person? Oh, another lady. We want inclusion here. Let's promote them. They should be on the center stage. So I'll just connect to my and try to do the. I hope my time is my time will be almost up, but yeah, my time is fine. This is too funky, man. They just send it to me. It's not funky. This is a new toy. Correct. <laughs> um, oh, six. Just connect. Yeah, just connect. So the volunteer will give me your email address. So uh, you you get a, a prompt from team that should join my my channel just for us to display um, this. Okay. Okay. So I should start adding. Uh, so I just create this. Demo Power BI user group. So I want to add people. So the first person? Ye Tunde. Ye okay. T. E. Okay, oh, oh, do you mind just typing it? And not, and not mess up your name. Sorry. I'm used to that. Okay. Now, can you see what you. team does? It picks the name, irrespective of the tenant. Then I can add her. We just wait for her to respond. Okay. Gone. Almost. Almost. 
Um, yeah, gone. The next person, please. Once you have got the ticket, my sticker, you're a sinner. Please come forward. Okay. Maybe the first four. We just stopped there because of our time. Okay, resolved and hold on, let's once his hand close. Okay, let's add another person. Wow, we have five. Good. Okay. Okay. I think this guy is an office ceasefire guy. He knows what to do. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Let's add that. Yeah. Have you got any prompt? Those that have added there, have you got a prompt? Please, can you try? Okay. Last person.
professor that has not been in Nigeria for the next 30 years. Fourth generation, I'm telling you, what is this? Our Naira has this, not that. that. And it changed it because they were building on statistics. And the inside they got is that they showed So, in a nutshell, what this story is all about is that business insight is the next power of people that drive that. Don't just sit on just the data part or sit on it, getting information. Try to drive the insight out of it. Everything you do, from Excel to Power BI to any function you try to try to bring an insight, and the prediction aspect is becoming trendy now. And that's where the big money is. It takes time. Like for insurance, I, I was building a, a software with my team then. I was working for the firm, and we noticed that at, on sports, when you have an accident, how do you send those information? Now, you need time stamps, you need to describe what kind of, and you can use it on your mobile app. Just take the picture, the software takes it to the back end, send it to the server, and tell them that an incident happened at such a time, and this is what happened, this is what happened. They can actually use their model to calculate what the premium they need to pay. Maybe a third party or a full compressor. A lot of money is there for you guys. So, okay, please, uh, this owner of this, the following cards EKY 992 d you need to move it. SNK 404 ET. Need to move it. EST 118DE GG 18ER. Need to move it. LND 83ZEW. Please just go downstairs and try to move it. So, in conclusion, inside. Huh? So, in conclusion, before I leave room for David to come and do his magic again on RBI, maybe he's going to show us how we're going to bring data from one point and take it to the sky, I think, I don't know. But the power is in our hands now to change the things we have been used to and make it more easy. Thank you very much. I see our speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Any
time. We said four was so actually meant three. We don't have three. Yeah? Well, we said 11, actually, we need 11. I hope you've enjoyed yourself so far. Yeah? So, lots of knowledge, you've written some notes. Uh, we have Emmanuel at the back with the recording. What we intend to do is edit it, and export it, editing all this stuff. You edit it and we put it on the Power BI user group only. Content from all of this, we're also going to call it, which is in the Power BI user group. And so everything is just going to be there. And uh, of course, if you're a member, you just download it. Right? And as I said, it's free. How many of you have registered on that group? No, no, meetup, no, meetup, no, 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 So uh, just a reminder for those that came late, Power, Power BI, of course, is Microsoft product. So they set up user groups all over the world in various cities wanting to do this thing. So many cities around the world right now, this is happening in many cities around the world. And everybody learning from each other, right? So and uh, the whole idea is we build a community around this tool. And uh, then we'll be able to share our ideas and all that kind of stuff for free for ourselves and we grow. And so for Nigeria, it's pbiuserbook.com slash Lagos. Uh, when registering this, when it started, when, when I was registering it, I was like, okay, yes, Fabia is nice. I'm an Excel guy. I come from the Excel side. There's some people that come from the analytics side, some people that come from the database side, SQL side. But the funny thing is, everybody's coming from different sides, and Fabia is like the hub. So they're all coming from different sides, and we're all using the same technology. Or at least the new technology is going to be the same. And then we now come into this power BI for the visualization. The most important thing is no matter how wonderfully technical or excellent you are, if you cannot tell a story, that's the most important thing. You need to learn how to tell stories. So yes, we do the data, we make all things look nice, but if you can't tell a story in front of top management, you really wasted your time. You can't get that promotion, you can't really move on. You need to learn storytelling. Who is the first person that came today? Who is the very first person? Okay, can I, can I stand up? Can I stand up for recognition? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, just stand up, just stand up, just stand up. Your name, sir. Your name, sir. Uche, Uche. Oh, okay, who, has, who knows Uche? Because you should have talked to each other. Who knows Uche? Okay, can I introduce Uche? Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, introduce Uche. You met him today, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so a small introduction. Okay, everyone, I'm very glad to. So I give it a chain. Um, the thing is, when it comes to data, you really need to learn visualization. How do I visualize it in a way that when people see it, they're like, ah, insights are coming in because your presentation is showing the correct visuals. And to do that, you need to understand numbers. You need to be able to show the numbers to whoever it is you're presenting. Now, one of the best people in the world, for me, in my research, when I was trying to learn this stuff, one of the best people in the world is Stephen Few. He is spelled S-T-E-P-H-E-N-F-E-W, Stephen Few. He is an ex excellent guy when it comes to visualization for business. He's not an IT guy or stuff, he just he knows how to visualize data for business. And when it comes to visualizing data for business, it's the same worldwide. We have actual data. We want to compare it to something like budgets, or compare it to something like same period last year, or same period last month. And then we want to know whether or not are we in the good zone, are we almost meeting targets? And then also you want to see projections to a certain time. No matter what business it is, it's the same thing. So is it sales data? Is it technical data? Is it a up, up time for the database or whatever it is? So we're going to give, uh, sorry, it like Uche, a book from Stephen Few. So he's just one that book. So show me the numbers. It's a book, very plenty book. It's very happy. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a book.
So please join this, uh, join our group. Let me ask one of two more questions and then I'll jump into my brief demo. Do you want us to finish on time? Um, well, I think we asked this question. What was this question? Just analyze, this was, okay, this was the Office 365. So we're mostly 2016 and 365. So we have advanced people here. Oh, some, okay, somebody has passed. Perfect, perfect. So we help with our demo, the small demo I have. And we asked this question, we have some people that are average, I can hold my own, okay? And we have some experts in the house come to me for advice. Please, you need to be a volunteer speaker, yeah? Because we're going to have a small meeting, I told you, just a 20-minute meeting as an official Power BI user group. But some are unofficial, you haven't joined, but yeah, official. Yeah. So, uh, ne next question, people are already answering this one. Can you quickly answer this? What word comes to mind? When uh, you, what word comes to mind when you think of Excel? If you're just thinking of Excel, what word comes to mind? You just type the word that comes to mind. Don't be influenced by the words that are there, just type them.
So I have never used it. <laughs> it's good to have feedback. It's so important. You can imagine you go to a place, you're talking to a thousand people, and you want to do one advance, this something, row context and trans context transition. And you think you're so tight. You don't have to have presentation. Everybody's looking at you like this. <laughs> and then the ratings come, you just get them all rubbish, smooth nonsense. That's what happens. So it's very good to get feedback. Very important to get feedback. And guess what? This is to guess what's happening. Data is flowing and entering this thing and see, right? And guess how much this costs? Zero. Although it costs me a lot of money, actually. It costs, it costs zero up if you have up to 20 audience. I think it's free. But let me give you a website that is zero regardless of the size of the audience. Because this is very useful. Um, it's called, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Socrative, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, Socrative. S O C I can't spell. Socrative. See S O C R A T I V E dot com. So Socrative.com. You go there and uh, all you do is you become a teacher and then you have students. So you go in as a teacher, you set up your questions, and then you once you come to the audience, you put it up, the question is there, everybody goes to the room. You know you went to the deep round. So you go to the room, answer, and you see it, it's all free. This one is Poll Everywhere, Poll Everywhere, that's this one. Poll Everywhere. It has a little bit more functionality than Socrative. It, it connects to your PowerPoint and it's very clean and fast. So is that why you went to the live word cloud as well? Yes. Because if, if Socrative, I think Socrative has it now, but I'm not sure. The live word cloud is really cool. It's a very cool way to engage your audience. I was telling you, I said everything is about presentation. So me learning, yes, I like Excel, I like Power BI, but frankly speaking, if you are very determined, you can learn it yourself, sitting at home. I tell people this every presentation I make. I say, what stops you from learning a new skill? And someone just answer, what stops you? you know, okay. Where to start? Where to start? That's a good one. Where to start? Okay, interest. Okay, then that means it's a skill that your boss has said, go and learn it. <laughs> and with me, I'm thinking about a skill you really already have an interest. So, yes, but if your boss says, go and learn it, please go and learn it. Jobs <laughs> <laughs> are not so easy to so Time. 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 Information overload. Information overload, where to start. Very true. <laughs> That one, I don't have that either. Procrastination. Yes, anybody else? Resources. Okay, maybe he is saying too much resources, you are saying resources. So, it's too much resources. Because, Frank, yeah, the tool to use. So, there's so much information, there's so much noise everywhere, scattered everything. So, all that data, you need someone to help you filter it. Because it's too much data. So how you get someone to filter is you go and look for influencers. Go and look for who are the top people. So I give you an example. When us, our team at the back, and us were trying to create a course, we are so sticklers for detail. We go to the whole world. Who is the expert in financial modeling? I flew to UK and had a discussion with them and this and this and this. All the discussions came back, did research, 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 research. Unfortunately, if you use my approach, you'll be a poor man. <laughs> so you, you, we did all that research and everything. Then we now developed one crazy course, and then the course broke it down, and blah, blah, blah. at the end of the day, we created the course. And about two years, probably cost us, if you actually calculate the time, probably to a million now to develop our financial modeling course, right? Because we, we needed to look for, and this was before the age of the real, real internet, so look for who are the influencers, they go to US, UK, who are the best in the UK, UK, London, and eventually you have a very good course. But then when you do that, you need to market it. How many of you know or like sales and marketing? Sales and marketing, you like sales and marketing. Highly unfortunate for the rest of you. Everybody must like sales and marketing. You need to market yourself. So if you know how to market yourself, you can market anything. Because at the end of the day, Yes, you learn Power BI, you can't market yourself, sorry. You really need to learn that. It's a soft skill that is so, so important, very important. And one big problem for people learning new skills is usually time. So what I tell people is this. You live three lives every, every single day. You live three lives. Every day, three lives. You walk for eight hours, 
you sleep or rest for eight hours. What do I do in the last eight hours? Traffic is one of your best friends when it comes to developing yourself. Right? When you no, even if you drive, driving or not driving, entering bus. When I started my career in Anderson, I mean, I was in the bus. Sometimes you go in the bus from Aja, no Aja, no, where was I then? To Milan, then I went to Aja. I don't know why. But anyway, enter. Look at what happens. See what just happened. I typed a formula in a cell. It has brought me a unique list of states. See. Is Lagos State in here? Okay, let, let's let's go and type. Why is Lagos State not here? Lagos State. Let's let's just let's just type Lagos here. So Lagos is inside our data. I know there's no local government called that badge, but it's fine. Let's let's go there. So let's come to where we have control. Okay. Any Lagos? Yeah. Right. It has expanded everything fine. Perfect. Now, this data, won't it be nice to kind of sort it alphabetically? Sure. How do you do that in Excel? You go to data, right? And uh, sort, isn't it? Excellent. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's another function. Let me just come to the beginning of unique. The new function called sort. Open my bracket. And then I go to the end of the formula and I just close my bracket. And I enter. Sorting by yeah, sorting by reverse. And I just go to the what's it called function f whatever two yes, and the sort has various options. So I do comma, then it says what sort index. Then it says sort order. Let me just say sort order, and the option is ascending or descending. Is it descending you wanted? Descending or something? Let's say enter. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So if somebody goes and decides to type some nonsense here or deletes here, press delete. Now you look at this. The first formula, if you look at the formula bar, is clear. Very in the formula bar is clear. The rest are kind of grayed out. Right? If I delete this, it will not I don't I don't agree. It's not, not going to allow. Well, I feel very stubborn. I type inside here. I enter. There's a new error function that's going to error message that's gonna come up. Spill. Okay? So, spill. so what spill means in this new Excel is I'm trying to spill information. Why are you disturbing me? Yeah? So so you it will I have removed those error messages. I don't like them. So but if you have the error message to tell you where the where the obstruction is, please remove this guy. Yeah? So I'll just I'll be and remove the guy. Delete. It spills back. Right? So this is the new Excel. There's just two functions I've shown you. I'll show you some more. Now, if I look at this list, look at this, I'm coming to mapping now. I need a unique list of states. I could do the same thing here. Sort, unique, well, why stress? I've done it somewhere else. I type equals to. I go to that somewhere else, which is in control. Yep. Yeah. You know, the normal way you do array formula, where you have to like Yes. In this case, you don't, right? I don't. Yes. Now, so any array, cell. yes, any array you now type, it will just fill. So even I can't even do the old one anymore. This arrays. Although there's something called single and at, but I don't do that. Anyway, so here I select, you know, it's this cell that started doing that spilling thing. I click on it. When I click on it, look at the formula very well. Control, this uh, something, uh, is it. I enter, well, nothing really happens. But look at what happens when I modify this formula a bit. If I want to refer to something that has a spill or something, I put this new thing, hash. I put hash at the end, then it spills. Now, it can't spill. See what's stopping it at the bottom? Map. Map. And map, please, can you move? Let me take it from D, take it down there. And then I delete this one, delete. It spills. Yeah? Can you see that? Some people are looking at this. No, it's not. <laughs> what, what, what happened to my old example? <laughs> so so, so that, is, that is how it is. 
That's, that's Excel. So this, this is the new function. I've shown you sort. There's also sort by. I'll leave that one. I've shown you unique. There's a couple of other ones. I don't know if you've seen it. There's one in very particular I'll show you. I don't want to go over, over, over time. But let me show you some other things in the new Excel engine. So if this is, this is a new thing, right? So I want to use something else. So I can't use this new thing without something else. I'm just going to copy, paste special values, yeah, and then enter. So now, the next thing I want to do is I need all these things to give me information. Now, this information is going to give me is live. It goes to the internet, pulls the information from the internet, and dumps it live. And how you do that is you convert to a new data type called geography. So if you see information that looks like geography, on that data, there's a new data type. This is available in Office 365 already. We still, and all those things are not available in Office 365. They're still fixing some bugs, some small, small bugs. I think they said it's gonna be released like next month. So if you have Office 365, those unique and stuff will start working maybe next month, I'm not sure, right? They want to fix some things first. But they give us the so-called experimenters, the insiders. Yeah, but you can be an insider, I'll show you how. So if I click geography, so geography now goes and checks every single thing here. Does it recognize it online? Is there anything about it it recognizes? And I don't recognize everything here. Yes, and then it changes it to state and stuff. So this is now a new data type called geography data type. So if I click on Yobi, for example, and I say, hey, Yobi, you are the new data type. And this new data type is a rich data type. We call it rich data types. Because I can click on this funny thing that comes up here and say, you know what, I want to see what's the capital let me see if you know Nigeria. What's the capital of you? Oh, oh, no you know, people sound there. <laughs> yes. So I put capital, see? Damatu. I click on it, I go to the edge and I double click so everybody else has his own. Right? I come here again and I say, you know what, I need the, um, I don't know, what's the largest city in, in Ayote? I don't know, Funi, never heard of it. I come to the edge, double click. Yes, at least the Lagos, where is Lagos? No, I Lagos. Yeah. Lagos. Yeah. Lagos. Lagos. Because of Lagos, right? Lagos, I Okay, then I come to, the, I come here again, I say, okay, I need population. Is there population there? Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, so I guess maybe it's right. I don't know what census figures it uses, but this is the latest information on that. Why is it put in the data? It's usually from Bing. So it just goes to Bing, and then there's a way that the algorithm works that it pulls data. You saw what Michael showed you about stocks. It's the same kind of thing. But it's inbuilt now. Inbuilt. So who and okay, let's see, let us see if this thing is smart. You know we just had elections, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I know you don't know any of the governors in other states, you know Lagos State. So let's just check. Uh, where's the leader? I think it has leaders. Yes. Leader. Okay. I don't know if this is true. Obviously the governor has not resumed office. <laughs> Everywhere we know him now. Yes, but what do you know now? This is yes. 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 Because of this, we can use our old Excel tricks, right? We can say, you know what, I don't like to see this kind of thing. So, old Excel guys already know this. It's a simple formula that says, if error. If error, error right? If error, error. Yeah. So I can say, if error, if error. You can see how simple this thing is. It's not as complex as our old Excel. Well, it's just like magic, really. And then I come, if there's an error, what do I do? What's blank in Excel? Double close, double close. Double close. Double close. And I close my bracket, enter. Then I double click, right? So this works nicely, yeah, it's not bad, pretty good, right? And with this information, for example, I can decide I'm going to insert a map, which is another new thing they've added, which I think is very smart. They have this new map thing, which has been there for a while, actually. If you click on this map thing, it kind of creates a map of Nigeria, and uh, it's supposed to, if my internet is good, and this is a good visual, I can now change the visual, let me see, is it coming, is it coming? So, internet. 
So let me go to the chart design and let's change the data a little bit. So currently, I have copy. What's that? Uh, city, let's just remove the guys. Don't need them. Population is the key thing. I don't need the leaders. Let's remove. Maybe it will recalculate itself. Let's say this is edit population. Show me by the population. Let's say okay. So let's see if this works. Right. My internet is on. We're supposed to see Nigeria. Yeah. Nigeria doesn't want to show. So let's do that. Nigeria shows. So, so that's. That's examples. You can do other amendments and stuff, plenty of things you can do. But let me jump to something else. But this is cool, isn't it? Super. Super, super cool. So how did you insert the map? I just click anywhere, anywhere in the data and just But ideally, how you should do it is this. Have your states, then have your values next to it, so you don't have the complexity of many things. And then just visualize. Like even this visual is not really correct as far as I'm concerned. I wanted to visualize this on the figures. Uh, population, or is it based on the population? Let me see. I think it's based on. Uh, yeah, so, so if I edit this, current values followed by numeric value. Map, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but it's supposed to be based on the values itself. By the way, let's move on to something else. Quick, quick, quick. I'll show you something else. Yeah, so now. This data, let me just quickly show you a small demo of something interesting, the other quick tools, okay? Are you okay? Should I go on? Sure? Yeah, because yeah. sure? yeah. you know, we've really gone over time. So um, the array, this is your dynamic arrays, okay, what's this? New data. Okay, yeah, so one of the main guys that invented, or that helped Microsoft to do this, is a guy that used to be a financial modeler. He used to be a top financial modeler. He's working at Microsoft now. And I just love the fact that I used to do financial modeling and stuff. So he, he can tell them what the real people need that use Excel very well. So he's he's kind of spearheading this in Microsoft. When it comes up, I'll see. I don't know if my internet is working. Yeah, his name is what's his name again? Yeah, Joe Carvedal. Yeah. Yeah, so so this is him saying preview. I'll send you all these links on the <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's quickly do one interesting experiment here. Show how complex you can build stuff with this thing. Very, very quick. So I'm going to get my unique list of states. Give me the best, fastest way to do that. Unique list of states. You have to do the same for like, okay, let's say sort, uh, sort what? So, um, unique, uh, unique. Is that unique? Uh, yeah, yeah, unique. Okay, here, give me feedback. Unique. Then what do I do? I go to data. Now, I've converted this to a table. There's something called table. Insert table. Always try, when you get your data, don't just use it like that. Convert it to a table. You do that by going to insert. Once you go to insert, you will see table. So you've converted, or you do control T. That's the shortcut. Oh, now I messed up. The same, don't help, I don't need help. Help is actually better than before, by the way. Very cool help. Not like before, help was helpless. <laughs> okay, I don't know if the formula looks right, does it? Does it look right? Okay. How many times should I close my bracket? Twice. Twice. Then I enter, it spills, right? Now, there's a new function that gives you random numbers. Anybody do Monte Carlo simulation here? This is superb for Monte Carlo simulation. So, here I will say equals to, I want to give me random numbers using the new function called rand array. What is rand array? Yeah. What's the last one? Oh, rand array. Of course, of course. So rand array, can you read what it says in it? For rand array, the first one is what? Rows. Okay, so how many rows do I want this thing to show me? You know, most times when you write in a formula that needs to give you plenty of things, it's one cell you will now write it in. Yeah. Once you write it in one cell, it will spill. So I want to write a formula in one cell and I want it to spill precisely the same size as what I have to the left. Don't you think so? Right? So it doesn't spill more or less. So you know it in already in Excel. It's count A. Counter, right? I don't know if that's counter. Yes. Do I go down? Is it? No, no, no. The counter. So counter. I'm going to counter an argument. 
Counter, counter what? Counter, now somebody will do this in old Excel. Highlight like this, but that is not good enough. You go to it and you put your hash. You've forgotten that hash. Remember the hash? Very hash. Yes. <laughs> so that hash is what gives you the spill. Then hash and then what? Um, what next? What's the next thing for rendering? Column. 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 How many columns do you want it to be? So if you say two columns, then it's going to fill it in two columns. You just want one column. So it's one column, it's fine. Then um, minimum. What should I use for minimum? Let's use this thing at the top. I'll do my normal F4 to lock. F4, which is the floor of this thing. F4. Then comma, um, what? I don't actually need to lock. We're writing a formula in one cell, isn't it? So I don't need to lock anything. You understand? Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's just pretend. So I go to max. Now integer means you want the answers to be an integer, but let's see what it gives without the integer thing. Let's enter. So look at that. So it's giving me random numbers between 30 and what? 999. But this is not a, a whole integer. So I need to come here and change. Maybe I want integer. I want to click. So I, I do this. I say comma, right? And then the option is what? What the option? True. True. So I go to true. I close my bracket and I enter. Now it's whole numbers. Now one report that many people do is bins. They bin things. Zero to this, this to that, this to that, this to that. So I want to create some bins. So the bins I want to do is this. I want to create 10 bins. I want to create 10 bins of data. So zero to something, this to that, this to that, this to that, bins. And then I want to now see the frequency of things that are coming in each bin. OK? Yeah. Now, if I come to this bin thing, I can say equals to. And I want to create 10 bins, so I'm going to use a new function called sequence. Okay? It's a new, one of the new functions. How many have we mentioned so far? I want to see if I can quickly do six. Right. You need sort. You already know sort by hash. Sorry? Rather. Rather. And now sequence. Five. So it's only one more function left. Yes, that's cool. Uh, what time? Pass three. Pass three. Pass three. Pass three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll finish very soon. Um, sequence. Okay, so sequence. What are the options, please? Rows, columns, start, step. Okay. Mm. Uh, step. I think step. Step. Yeah. So rows is what? Rows. How many rows oh, do we need? One. No. Think about. We're creating. Bands. How many bands do we need? Ten. 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 Good. So is this cell up here, right? Yeah. Ten. Yes. Uh huh. So how many columns? Zero to that. But actually, we just have one column. We we'll do the other one separately. So let's say one, comma. Um, starts. You will start from zero. Obviously, You're going to start from zero. Then comma um, steps. Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. Yes. So. Um, if I come up here to 99, if you think about it, first one is going to start at 0, so something. The next one is 100. 100. So 99 will be right. We have to add 1 to it, right? 99 plus 1. So I close my bracket and I enter, and it gives me a list. Can you see that? Right. Pretty cool. So I come to the next bin here, say equals to, and I do another word, sequence, right? Sequence of what? Sequence of. How many rows? Same cell, right? And then comma. And how many columns? One, comma. How many, what is it? Start. So this one is 0 to 99. So it's going to start by this, I think. Right? Then comma steps. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's 99. So the next one will be what? 99. The next one will be 199. So 100. Perfect. See some mathematicians here. Nice. So 99 plus 1. Close bracket. Enter. Uh, enter. I think close bracket. Okay. This, this sign means I'm about to crash. Don't crash. Things are going well. Okay. All right, uh, it looks fine. I think, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Perfect. So now come here and we say, okay, no, we want the bits to be only five. Look up, five, it reduces. Perfect. So it's, I want the bits to be 20. Yeah. 
You get? Yeah. It's it's so simple. It's like crazy. So anyway, we come here. We're going to do a small complex formula. What I want to do is this. I want to find out this names of the states. I want it to show me the names of the states between zero and ninety-nine. So it should show something like this: Lagos, maybe comma, Abuja, comma, Oyo, comma, like that. Just list out those that fall into those brackets. Now this is sounding a bit more complex. So in Excel, you know what to do. You'll say if, if for example, um, yeah, if a logical test. Okay, so the logical test is. Normally you say if this cell is greater than that cell, yes. Yes. so instead of that, I'm going to come to this cell and I'm going to say that your hash thing. Now you've already broken rules of Excel completely. This thing said logical test, it's not tests, not plural, test. So test means one cell. But here I'm giving it a spill, which means I'm testing plenty things. In old Excel, it will never work. To give you one error, and you need to know that you need to highlight the range and do one math. The formula for what I'm about to do is like this. Now, let's see. So, anyway, this hash thing, we are check, checking it to see if it is a greater than, I think, greater than what? Yeah, so maybe, no, greater than or equal to maybe this cell. Right? Yeah, okay, that's true. It's greater than or equal to the whole thing, isn't it? No, no, they do. No, it's not only one in one place. It's only one cell. Okay, it's one cell. So let's just for we need to lock this because this is old Excel we're using now. Old Excel. So I'll lock that. Should we lock this too? Maybe since we're dragging it down, we should probably we're going to drag this the old Excel way. Yeah. So I'm using old Excel and new Excel. Sorry guys, we're almost done. I know this is so strange to you, but it's fine. Don't worry. F two. How do I lock? F four. F four. F four. F four. This one. Okay, so this is the first test. Well, we have two tests. Yeah. In bold Excel, you say and. and. I don't want to bother you, and will not work. And is not going to work. There's something about the new Excel and the and and some. I can't start explaining the technical reason why it won't work. So, the, the way it will work is if you put a bracket around this first um, argument or logic and multiply it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then we multiply it by the new logic, the next one, which will be the same cell, which I do an F4, less than F4, F4, and I put a hash to make it spill. Is it? Yes. Yes. So the same thing, but this time what? Less than or equal to what? Um, this, this, this one, right? Yes. And oh, yeah, I should need to just lock it. I just need to lock it. Yeah, I need to lock it. Right. Then I close the bracket. So now you're saying if all of you are greater than or equal to this guy and all of you are less than or equal to that guy, um, then the next thing after is then, right? Yeah. Then um, then give me all of these guys, right? Yes. What do I do to make it? Uh, you see, you guys are very harsh. So <laughs> very harsh. Then I do the solution to uh, make. Uh, G9, the reference as well. Yeah, I don't need so G. What we did is we locked the column. And when you lock the column, you're saying that anytime I go right, don't change. So since I'm never going right, I'm going down, it doesn't matter. Lock it or not lock it, it doesn't matter. Okay? So so this is value if true. Value if false, I just want a blank. Okay? So there's gonna be a problem now when I do enter, just watch. It's gonna be a small problem. Right. How should I explain the problem? Anybody can explain the problem? So what I've just done is I've said what is inside zero and ninety nine. If you check this list, what are the two states? Cross, cross river and ninety nine. And cross river and so it has done the answer for one zero to ninety nine, and it spilled it. The problem is I don't want it, I want it in a cell. So when you want a spill, a range in a cell, you need to use something called an aggregator. The aggregators we need know is sum. Sum is an aggregator. Average is an aggregator. You say average plenty things, one answer. Sum, plenty things, one answer. Right? So what we need to do is say 
do you know what? We're going to use a new function, which I think is already in Office 365. We're going to use text join. Yeah? So we're going to use text join. So text join is a new function. So we're going to say, hey, text join. I want you to join. What's text join asking for? Delimiter. So delimiter means what are you separating these things with? I want you to text join, uh, let me say, double quotes. I like this pipe thing. I don't know why I like it. This pipe. And then double quotes. Yeah? Comma. Now, this pipe, let me put a space before it and a space after it. Just give me the Right. So the next thing it asks for is ignore empty. What does that mean? Yes, it should ignore, I think. <laughs> yes. Ignore. Ignore empty. Yes. Ignore empty. And then, can you see the next thing? Text, text one. Well, it's not text one I want. It's one funny togetherness. But hopefully it will work. So let's see. Is it only federal capital? Let's check. Let's increase, let's increase the bin size to 250. So the bin sizes are bigger. Can you see that? Yeah. Interesting, right? So I come here, and I come here, I come to the edge, and I double click. Right. David. Yes, sir. Would concatenate have done the No, no, that's it. Concatenate won't give you the. the concatenate and use. So, concatenate is an old function, and they are trying to. Let, let me show you something about those funny functions. Look at this. See concat, concatenate, right? Any function, guys, any function you see a yellow mark, it means it's to be phased out. Ah. Yes. <laughs> it means to be phased out. Do you get? And it means there's a new function that replaces it that is more powerful. So what replaces concatenate is concat. There's something called concat. Yeah? So but text join is even more powerful than this. So this is the end of my demo, guys. Excel has changed, and there are many things here. Go to the formula, okay? Funny looking formula, look at it. Excel has changed seriously. So look at it. Some hash signs and some funny things and all that. Who uses data validation here? If you use data validation, you can use hash too. So go to data validation, list validation, inside the formula say equals to, let me just quickly show you that. When you want to use data validations in this new thing, you can't change all your old arrays. You don't need to do that. So it's going to take a while for those that build plenty arrays. Right? So this is the end of the demo side, guys. It was a lot. It was it hard? So we're just looking at the, so this is, this is one year ahead. I'll show you one year ahead in Excel, right? Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yes, but I know we have time up, but I left the last one. I haven't told you the last one. The last one, unfortunately, if you can't, just give me a second. I'm just going to type Lagos here, right? Well, no, Lagos doesn't have many things. Give me a state that you know was there. Plenty, Abba. Abia. Abia state. Uh, let's say market, no, market, line of business. I don't know what line of business it is. Trading, or oh, that trading, spare parts. Spare parts, okay. <laughs> I like that, okay, parts. Yeah, you're, you're very right, you're very right. Parts, 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 where, is, where are we? Uh, okay, parts, right? Parts, 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 parts. Um, let's say, I think the data is from when to where? 1st of April, 2015, 2014 and 2015, perfect, perfect. So let's say I want data from 1st of April uh, 2014 to, I don't know, um, 30th of June 2013. Right. Now, this is cool. This is all you need to do. Now we're going to create a table that mimics this, that just automatically gives us this, almost like a paper table does. Yeah, in fact, the same as paper table does. First thing I'm going to do is type an equals to sign. I need the entire headings of this. Sorry, the head. Okay. Yes. Okay. And um, I come here and I highlight this. This highlight. Uh, no, I don't want one. I want just the headings. Can't you use the name of the headings? No, it's just the headings, not one one. Okay. Let me go left because the mouse is tap. Uh, okay. Good. Sales headers. That's, this is the table language, right? When I enter, it spills. Remember spill? So if I type something here, it can't spill. 
I believe this one spills. So anytime in the new Excel, anytime it calls to highlight a range, it spills. Don't give me an error to always spill, right? So now that this has spilled, what I want is I want to give me exactly the data I need based on that criteria, right? There's a new, the most powerful of all the functions is filter. The most powerful of all the new functions is filter. This guy is crazy. Yes? And you know about crazy people, they don't like shouting. See how many arguments the guy has. How many, is it three? Okay, three, kind of. It's just crazy. So this one, I know the entire table is called sales. I'm just going to say sales. I want you to go and filter sales, right? Comma. And in this sales table that you are filtering, I want you to give me what? I want you to give me uh, markets, right? So I want you to give me sales um, market, sales dot, is it dot? No, in, in uh, it's this square bracket that is used in this thing. This is table way of speaking to table. Sales market, right? Sales markets, that is what? Sales market, that is equal to what? Abia, right? Let me just close this, all right? And let's just enter. <laughs> madness. <laughs> Absolute madness. So, you obviously know what's next. <laughs> but you know how you know go and say, um, okay, no, it's not just this, right? It's what? Let me just do two. I won't do all, I'll just do two. And as I told you, and won't work. So the trick is to use a lot. Use so multiply. Multiply is like the and operator. So I say multiply, and I say again, I want a um, sales table that is uh, sales. Is it sales? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, square bracket. Now we're looking for parts. Where's parts? Line of business. Um, to tab, I should type. Tab. And then close the square bracket. That is also what equal to this guy here. Yeah. And I close my bracket and close for fill time. Yeah, so I enter. Now, if you check the parts, it's only parts. Then this column is supposed to be big, so I guess I like it and maybe format it as a big control shift. What? Who knows? Control shift four. Control shift three to make it a big format. Yes, control shift three. It's actually control hash. This hash is very popular today. So, anyway, so that's it. So I won't do the rest. The rest is simply dates. I want you to give me sales. Uh, date is greater than or equal to start date. Comma sales. This is less than. And you just build your table. Your table continues to reduce. And obviously, we know we only have one in Lagos. So if I type Lagos here, Lagos will probably not have data. So it's say car. This is a new error message that says this thing does not exist. Okay, it doesn't exist in your database, so please go and think of something else. Okay, we can have one last time. Sorry. Okay, so data. Let's pretend that Lagos has what? Parts. So I, I can change data to parts. Now, it, since it has parts, hopefully it will not give me an error. Where are we? It should now give me that data. Right. Excel has changed forever. Once this thing is released, it's crazy. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, questions? Just let me take two or three questions and then three questions. The what? Choir. No, 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 I just mentioned. Ah. <laughs> Go online, watch the video. So, it's, it's one thing to come to events like this and learn this kind of thing. Um, but I've noticed that it's when I have a come to my place. Deadline. Yes. Now what do my deadline? Yes. I do like this. I do like two nights of school, but I get it still. I get it still. But you know, where can we pay to volunteer to do with you? Yes. On life with it. Excellent. So that you know, there's some importance to you. Yes. So quick, excellent. Thank you for the question. And just takes me to the next thing I want to say. We need to form a. We need all to join this group. Because I really need to be more active. This RBI is a right? Because what I'm planning is we should do monthly.
Yeah, not not uh, talks like this, but monthly labs. So monthly labs, when you come with your computer, and then we agree in the group what the case study is going to be. Maybe it's doing your job, your work, but remove all the sensitive information. And then say, okay, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to do Power Query in this lab. So come, somebody volunteers as an expert Power Query, comes and teaches Power Query. The next one, we're going to build a data model for Power BI. We're going to get data from election data or something. So I ask election data, oh, let's talk, let's put election data, and let's come and do a Power BI model for another month. So if we're talking on the group a lot, we can do that. And I volunteer my time, and I'm sure some experts here will also volunteer their time. So that in the year, we have like 12 um, um, labs, right? And then we can have this as a quarterly talk. This quarterly talk, we bring in people to talk. Because let me tell you something. As much as possible, there are MVPs here. And if Microsoft can see people volunteering and talking, you put it in their database, you become an MVP, and there are lots of perks there. So as much as possible, let's build this group together, and let's get some, let's have a target, two MVPs by next year, three MVPs and like that, and we continue growing. The best thing is this, knowledge right, is a very funny thing. It's the only thing that when you give away, you get more back. It's the only thing in the world. You give it out, and it actually gets more. So don't hoard it, don't hoard it. And networking is another thing. There's the next Bill Gates here, there's the next Microsoft here. And all you needed to do was talk to the next person. Who has talked to the most people? Who can stand and say, I've talked, I can introduce five people or six people? What's the highest you think can you do? Just shout it out. Three, three. Anyone more than three? Not your colleagues. <laughs> not your colleagues, not your colleagues. Not your colleagues. Anyone higher than three? Three, four, four. Four, not your colleagues. Four, six. I see you. Six. Wow. Okay. Who can beat six? <laughs> Who can beat six? Can I introduce you? <laughs> that, that means five, right? Well, it can beat six. Okay. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Can you stand up? You added me. No, it doesn't work. No. <laughs> you said five. So we have small competition. We're winning the last prize, and then we're going to close. So, we're going to continue the conversation online. Please join the group, please. Join the group, and what I've said, isn't that valuable for all of us? Please, just if you join the group, let's start the conversation. So, can we start out the competition and you guys are winning the prize? The competition is simply this, name the five people. Introduce the five people. All you need to do is introduce their name at least, you try their name and tell me in just one sentence. Who are the five people? Okay. Sorry? Uche has left. Okay, Uche, okay. Who is Uche? What is it? Okay, okay, Uche. Then who? Are you your neighbor? Victoria. That doesn't qualify, sorry. Veronica. Princess. Princess. Three. The camera guy, you're okay? Do you agree with your name? Is, is your name? Okay, that's four, that's four. Four? Uh, Kendi. Kendi. Who is Kendi? Are you Kendi? Okay. <laughs> you know, you can just hear something. <laughs> then, uh, then, uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your name, okay. <laughs> Okay, fine. Can you try? Okay, try, try. Just wait till yeah, you Can you? Can you? Well, he mentioned it. Well, anyway, yes, okay. Sorry, continue. Can you? Are you Bambi? Are you Bambi? Oh, nice. Um, George. George. Uh, business development guy. Princess. Princess. Um, she. Okay. Oh, 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 he's very smart, but I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to Four, four, four. He has five. Um, did he brown? No. <laughs> 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 okay, so guess what? Both of them are getting a prize. They're getting a book, too. They're getting that book. Wow. Yeah, they're getting that book. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Please read it, very happy, but thank you. Yes, yes, thank you very much. So everybody, thank you very much for coming. And uh, we hope to agree online when we're meeting again. Yeah, because obviously I'd like the next session to be a Power BI session. To actually build a model. We can get interested later, we agree in the group, and then next month, if you can, next month, hopefully, 
Next month we do a session. A, what's it called? Hands on. Hands on lab. What we need is this. We need volunteers for space. So to say, okay, use our office, and let's say we leave it to like 50 people or something like that, because it's only in the group. Anybody that wants to come or join the group. So say, okay, we volunteer our space. Oh, I'm volunteering my time already. Volunteer my time. Someone says, okay, catering, uh, 50 people. I volunteer 50 meat packs, I volunteer 50 meat packs. I volunteer this, I volunteer that. That's how we will now gradually grow and continue building knowledge and sharing knowledge. Okay? So we see you online. Thank you very much, everybody. Take a picture. Let's take a picture. Let's take a picture.